Hell yeah. I mean, we stand for a lot of things, but if we could only stand for one thing in this world in this time right now, it is to show that toxic masculinity is stupid and that there are a lot of ways to be a man and to be a good person in this world and that toxic masculinity ain't one of them. Ned Fulmer, Keith Habersberger, Zach Kornfeld, and Eugene Lee Yang are four American millennial video producers who were working at BuzzFeed in 2014 when a colleague was searching for men who were willing to show their butts on camera for a video about men trying women's underwear for the first time. Though the video was supposed to be a one-off, the audience loved these four guys and the dynamic between them, and thus, the Try Guys were born. Over the next three years, these men rose from being four guys in BuzzFeed's large group of producers to being internet celebrities. Their videos with BuzzFeed amassed nearly a billion views, they won awards, and became household names among young people. At the time they left BuzzFeed, viewers around the world had spent more than 5 billion minutes watching their content with more than 1.5 billion video views. The Try Guys left BuzzFeed in 2018 to form their own production company, Second Try LLC, where they have continued to create content under the Try Guys brand, expanding their content across many social media streams, writing a book, selling merchandise, making podcasts, going on tour, and still producing high quality long form video content on YouTube. The channel currently has 7.56 subscribers and videos routinely amass nearly 2 million views. These videos range from trying soap art, to ranking reality TV shows, to baking without instructions, to eating everything on the menu at a fast food restaurant, to attempting baby photography, and this is just scratching the surface. The videos are often competitions, but above all, the channel and entire media company is about sharing their lives, trying new things, and making people laugh. The Try Guys embrace their whole selves and are willing to push gender norms and encourage viewers to do the same. Dolls are for everybody. Let your kid play with whatever the hell they want. Ned Fulmer moved to LA to become a video producer after graduating with a degree in chemistry from Yale and working in research and development. He's often noted for his competitive nature, love of sports, and frequently talking about his wife, Ariel. My wife. My wife. I wish my wife were here. My wife would think I look freaking hot right now. Like a lot. Any fan could make a 30 minute montage of any time Ned has mentioned his my wife. wife. He's also the only dad in the group with two young sons. He can occasionally be found making some very questionable decisions regarding his bodily safety. You guys are going to be delivering a special message to the class of 2020 while eating this ghost pepper. Ah! Amelia Sanchez, Celine Park, Charles Randall, Chelsea Remenga. Ah! 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 Perseverance! Maybe more than occasionally. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh my god, Let stop. Me smash these two dumplings in my face. Ah! <laughs> Keith Habersberger went to college on a French horn scholarship. He is known as the funny guy of the group. He's also known for his comically large mouth and love of food, specifically fried chicken. Even having a video series on the channel where he eats everything on the menu at a specific chain restaurant. Keith is married with his wife Becky making frequent appearances on the channel. No, I've been complimented on my calf muscles. I mean, look at look at this. Oh. Look at these massive oh my babies. God. They're fucking huge. Uh. <laughs> They're huge calves. I mean, look. woo, yeah. Zach Kornfeld could be described as quirky. He, maybe unironically, loves the movie Cats, the Fast and the Furious franchise, and all sorts of little trinkets. And while Keith might be more of a comedian, Zach likes to play up the man-child persona for laughs, often focusing more on getting a laugh than winning whatever challenge is at hand. What up, it's your boy, Corn Diddy. I, I'm sorry, I regret everything that's happening. For a long time, he was the bachelor of the group before he introduced his girlfriend, Maggie, who now makes appearances on social media. Zach is physically the smallest try guy and suffers from chronic pain and reduced mobility due to a condition called ankylosing spondylitis. You were so close to being so mean. Why are you guys so nice? <laughs> Eugene Lee Yang is the only non-white member of the Try Guys, coming from a Korean American family. For many years, he hinted at queerness, but officially came out as gay in a 2019 video where he tells the story of growing up as a gay man from a traditional Asian family living in rural Texas through dance. Eugene puts on a dark, cold, standoffish persona, but it's largely just that, a persona. Also, he really does not like babies. It was too fast. You can use room in me. Okay. How do I, <laughs> how do I turn on? You right. got it. Hi, honey. 
We all know what this is gonna be. I'm gonna look halfway decent. Keith's gonna make a lot of really good puns. Ned's gonna talk about his ass and his wife, and then Zach's gonna complain the whole time. So put me in a f***ing Santa costume. Let's do this. It's late. Let's go. Hegemony is a concept that comes from Antonio Gramsci's analysis of class relations. It is a cultural dynamic where a group claims and sustains a dominant position in social life. The concept was applied to gender dynamics by Raywin Quano, who dubbed her theory as hegemonic masculinity theory. Hegemonic masculinity is the basis of much of the current field of masculinity studies. Hegemonic masculinity theory says that there are multiple ways to be a man, but there is a certain way that is dominant and holds the highest level of power in a patriarchal system, and therefore it defines all other forms of masculinity and femininity. What is deemed hegemonic is subject to change and differs between societies, as it corresponds with cultural values and institutional powers. In current American societies, hegemonic masculinity is pretty much what we picture when we think frat boy or suburban dad. These men are likely white, cisgender, and heterosexual, like sports, have a high power, high paying job, are or aspire to be married to a conventionally attractive woman, have immense knowledge of sports, enjoy sex, and don't express their emotions publicly. They're expected to be stoic, dominant, aggressive, independent, physically strong, and willing to take risks. In terms of the Try Guys, we may consider Ned to be the most hegemonically masculine member of the group. I don't know that I agree that I'm a frat douche. Yeah. Uh, I'm you more were a, in a frat. I was not in the frat, oh, yep. uh, but I was in the improv group, which kind of like a frat. <laughs> and admittedly, he fits the bill pretty well. However, in Ned and the Try Guys as a whole, we can also see Eric Anderson's theory of inclusive masculinities. Anderson challenged hegemonic masculinity theory, saying that the theory is dependent on homophobia being central to hegemonic masculinity, and arguing that at present, homophobia does not rule masculinity. While hegemonic masculinity depends on positioning a form of usually straight white manhood as superior to subordinated masculinities of gay men, Anderson proposes a new modern theory of masculinity that is free of homophobia, violence, and misogyny. It may be more than a little idealistic to say that this inclusive masculinity has overtaken hegemonic masculinity as the dominant form of manhood in this current country at this current time, but I think it's safe to say that the Try Guys inclusive masculinity is the basis of what allows them to circumvent toxicity in their pursuits of masculinity and to demonstrate a better way to be a man. As I noted earlier, Eugene came out as gay in a 2019 video, which he self-directed, wrote, and starred in that garnered nearly 20 million views portraying his struggle to come to terms with his sexuality through dance. In the two years since this video, Eugene's queerness has become a central part of his on-camera persona and a recurring theme throughout Try Guys videos. According to Connell's theory of hegemonic masculinity, being the sole gay man in a group with three straight men would classify Eugene's masculinity as subordinated and inferior to the other Try Guys. To viewers though, this truly is not the case. In fact, it's a bit of an inside joke among viewers of the Try Guys that Eugene is the most attractive of the guys. Guys, okay, so we asked all of our coworkers internationally which of you guys was physically the hottest. Attractive Try Guy, I would say Eugene. Yep, he's the hottest. No contest, Eugene. Eugene Yang. Eugene. It's Eugene. Eugene. I mean, it's Eugene. And often beats the other guys in many competitions, including those that pertain to traditionally more masculine things. God. Oh my God. Wow. You're amazing. What are dollars? Wow. Yeah. Yes! Yes! Woo! Additionally, the other Try Guys have embraced Eugene throughout his journey of coming out and living as a gay man, never subjecting him to a second class status. Yeah, I'm excited for everybody to know what we know, which is that you're all the wonderful things that you are and also you're gay. Rather, the Try Guys have truly embraced an inclusive masculinity in which they have no semblance of what Anderson calls homo hysteria, a permeating panic about appearing or acting gay that leads men to publicly demonstrate their masculinity and straightness. Bridges and Pasco explain the way that masculinities are often built around homophobias, discussing that homophobia is a form of gender practice that perpetuates inequality, with men policing themselves and others into performing their masculinity in an acceptable way. Contrarily to this, the Try Guys videos are often full of them doing things that would be considered very homoerotic, making suggestive comments about men, sharing close physical contact with each other. This is such a common occurrence that multiple fans have made compilation videos of these moments with titles such as Keith being the gayest straight guy ever for five minutes straight. Notably, while these moments are often 
really funny. The homoeroticism is not intended as the punchline. Popular videos demonstrating that men can be funny and masculine without being homophobic help shift the cultural overtone window towards a post-homophobia. Something else that Bridges and Pasco note is that due to how intertwined homophobia and masculinity are, feminist and progressive men who assuage homophobia are often mistaken for being gay. I'll let this clip speak for itself. Oh, are the Try Guys straight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. I've been approached by people on the street who say, oh my God, I love the Try Guys. I love the LGBTQ representation. Zach and Keith are such a cute couple. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, I got it wrong. Right here, baby. But Weird what it shows well, me is that is Keith and I are doing a lot for representation. You have a lot for representation for straight dudes who like love kissing up on each other. <laughs> like we are the most like sensually like comfortable straight dude group yeah. to ever like brace the comedy scene. We're very comfortable with our sexuality. Yeah. In an article for The Guardian, Matthew Salzes discusses the ways that growing up as an Asian man in America impacted his senses of self-worth and masculinity. He notes that stereotypes he heard of Asian American men were emasculated, weak, and effeminate, all stereotypes stemming from white Americans' insecurities about Asian men who came to America in the late 1800s laboring to construct the transcontinental railroad. He also discusses how the model minority myth surrounding Asian Americans was intended to pit Asian Americans against African Americans. And while African American men were seen as threats to white women due to their presumed hypermasculinity, Asian men were seen as non-threatening and emasculated. In many Try Guys videos, we've seen Eugene attempt to dispute stereotypes of Asian men as weak and non-masculine. In fact, he cites a desire to disprove this myth as his motivation for being someone in the public eye and his drive to, to succeed in spite of the odds stacked against him. Just recently, in response to a wave of anti-Asian hate, Eugene put together a 70 minute long video discussing the history of racism against Asians in the US and current manifestations of this hatred, as well as what people can do to help. This video was a fundraiser for the Stop Asian Hate Foundation that has raised over $130,000. In the reading Manning Up to Being Gay, author Andrew Acampo discusses the experiences of gay first-generation immigrant men and their struggles to fit in despite the many ways that they are different from the hegemonic masculine norm, as well as trying to please their often conservative families. This reflects the way that Eugene talks about his childhood. He often discusses feeling a need to be a good representative of Asian Americans growing up in a small town and this was compounded by trying to come to terms with his sexuality and led to some serious struggles with mental and emotional health that he has talked about openly on the channel. The gay Asian American on top of that triples to the stress. I just had to be hyper aware of doing anything that would deepen someone else's prejudice towards either party. Like what? Being like weaker than others. Cause you know, I've cried before, but when they put me in a video to talk about crying, I was like, I'm not gonna fucking talk to you about crying. Do you think that's good for either party that I'm representing? And especially in early videos, I always had to be like the best at something. Cause I didn't want to be the Asian man on screen who failed. I didn't want to be the Asian man on screen when I started doing Try Guys, whoever looked worse than them. I did not want to be something that could potentially move the needle in a direction that was not further boosting communities that need boosting. In truth, I am, just as broken and as weird and fucked up, if not more in a lot of ways. The pressure of not being able to showcase that, express that through work was crushing. It was crushing for me. Avid Try Guys viewers will know that a huge part of their brand is Keith's affinity for food, particularly meat. I'm starting to get a little bit of the meat fatigue, but it's so delicious that who cares what my body's telling me? Mmm. oh wow. According to a study by Luica Campos, Sonia Bernardes, and Cristina Godinho in 2018, red meat consumption is typically linked with stereotypical masculinity, while fruit and vegetable consumption are linked with femininity. Additionally, a 1995 study showed that individuals eating smaller meals were considered more feminine than those eating larger meals, with women who ate smaller, more typically feminine meals being found more attractive. This steak makes me think, I'm building a deck. Yeah, in a tank top. You know? Yeah. <laughs> With a hammer, a sledgehammer. Yeah. And I'm not gonna wear sunscreen. No. uh, -uh. uh, -uh. I'm oh, stronger. Yeah. Oh, no, the cauliflower! Oh. The cauliflower! There's raisins in this cauliflower. They're raisin the stings. <laughs> <laughs> so These assumptions about the gender context of various foods are rooted in a wider stereotype of the male body's invulnerability to unhealthy behaviors. This idea 
that underlies so much of how we understand gender can also explain why we often expect boys and men to make poor decisions and engage in risky behaviors. The behaviors we associate with hegemonic masculinity often come with inherent risks. Think binge drinking, engaging in risky sexual behaviors, reckless driving, eating large quantities of food considered unhealthy. This is also in part why men have lower life expectancies than women. From this lens, we can see food as a stand-in for a much wider conversation about how we internalize messages about gender behavior around our health and well-being. Interestingly, contrarily to his public persona, Keith has discussed in some videos and podcasts that outside of filming videos, he's actually greatly cut down his meat consumption, citing a desire to be healthier and the influence of his wife Becky's vegetarianism. So what does it mean that despite aiming for a healthier lifestyle, Keith's brand is still so intertwined with this idea of fried chicken and steak? And while Keith's love of what many may consider junk food is seen as an endearing trait, how might the same behavior be interpreted if a woman did them? In all likelihood, a woman demonstrating these same behaviors and affinity for fried chicken would be seen as unhealthy and likely be subject to frequent comments about her weight and the like. In a somewhat ironic way, men have the privilege of being able to inflict damage on their own bodies. But is it really a privilege if it's expected and has overall negative consequences? These questions must be grappled with and can help us analyze the masculinity of the Try Guys and other men like them. This has been Eat the Menu. I'm Keith Habersberger. I think I'm gonna vomit. What should I eat next? What, where do you want me to eat? Maybe Salad Mart? Also, we got a lot of people challenging me to do this thinking I would never want to eat fried chicken again. <laughs> you stupid, you stupid idiots. Of course I want to eat fried chicken again. Nothing could stop me. When we hear about body image in the media, it is nearly always in reference to women. However, while the pressures are different, men still face immense pressure to have ideal bodies. In a 2015 article on body image weight and self-concept in men, Elliot Montgomery Schuyler discusses how for men as for women, social pressure to look a certain way increases the discrepancy between the ideal and one's body. Skylar goes on to argue that increased messaging around the male body in recent years has led to many more men struggling with self-concept relating to weight. Despite the focus on the male gaze's impact on how women are portrayed in media, these same industries target men, aiming to make them feel inept and therefore in need of whatever product is being sold to them. Often this ineptitude is in the form of emasculation. Both men and women are increasingly likely to develop eating disorders. In recent years, men have reported an increased desire to groom body hair, have more hair on their heads, be thinner, and have natural appearing muscles. The difference, however, between the way that men and women receive messaging about bodies is that women are socialized to express their emotions to each other, while men are socialized to be stoic, to bury their insecurities and never let anybody know that anything is wrong. Yeah, if I have to open up here, I don't really like the way that I look. Most don't talk about my feelings openly. One wouldn't expect me to have a lot of issues about my body when I'm just riddled with body insecurity. The topic of body image in men is something that the Try Guys often discuss, helping to stop the stigma around men's body image and its impact on mental health. Back in 2016, the Try Guys did a video where they got photoshopped to resemble ideal male bodies. During this video, each of the guys expressed their own body insecurities, often coming back to not feeling manly enough. Growing up, I thought I was too pudgy. I didn't want to take my shirt off at the pool. Then now that I'm an adult, I think I'm like too thin and scrawny. Intellectually, I know that I'm not any less of a man because I'm not big and strong, but it's hard sometimes to not look at the people around you and feel less than. This is one of my favorite Try Guys videos of all time because it is a perfect example of how men can struggle with their body image and the ways that media portrayals of men impact the self-confidence of so-called real men. I'm a comedian, right? I'm, I'm a funny guy. And I've always thought growing up, like funny guys get to look however they want. And that's not it anymore. Like Chris Pratt, was like my body type, and now he's an action star. John Krasinski, same body type, now he's an action star. You are supposed to have this masculineness to you, even if you're a clown. Additionally, it would have been easy for the guys to see photos of themselves after Photoshop and lament that they didn't look like that. But instead, they express the reality that even if they did look like that, they don't think it would really make them happy or fulfilled in themselves or their masculinity. Huh. I was just struck with a really great epiphany. I've always wanted to look like this, but seeing this now in front of me makes me realize I'll always have a problem with my body because I just thought 
that my stomach still looks fat. It in a more recent video, the Try Guys tried to draw nude self-portraits. While this is in part a silly video, as they all decided to gift the drawings to their significant others in a Valentine's Day gag gift, it also gives us a chance to see how their body image and relationship with their bodies have changed in the last five years. This guy is friendly. He's naked, and maybe naked people shouldn't be so friendly, but this guy is friendly. I think what I would like to do is to highlight everything in my life that I have at one point been insecure about. And I'm going to instead reclaim those as the most vibrant, colorful, eye-grabbing parts of me. Years of having to expose myself in emotional and physical ways online for comedy has uh, actually taught me a lot about how to not take things so seriously. In the end, who the f cares? Your relationship is with your body and your body alone. The Try Guys are positive role models who show viewers that men can struggle with body image, but also that even with less than ideal body image, you can still love things about yourself and express greater confidence. I think of myself as a very weak, frail person. I, I don't mean that to be mean. I, you know, I, I have an autoimmune disease and I'm, I'm not an athletic person, but I'm looking at myself now and I think that my physique is stronger than I, I give myself credit for. They also show that men can express emotional vulnerability and insecurities and still be men, fighting the societal pressures, telling us that expressing your emotions is emasculating. Discussing their very first video, trying on women's underwear, and the greater impact as men who were willing to take risks that may jeopardize their masculinity, Zach says, Classic masculinity is terrified of any semblance of effeminization, and especially the idea of a string up my butt. I think the thing that's always set us apart is our willingness and ability to be vulnerable, whatever that means, physically and emotionally. Something I've been thinking about a lot while pursuing research for this project is whether the Try Guys brand only works because they're guys. How would it be different if they were the Try Gals or the Try Folk? I don't think I've personally come to a satisfying answer, but what I do know is that it is worth noting that they are the Try Guys. From the get-go, they are immediately presenting that they are men. They're not looking to abolish gender. Rather, they're seeking a way to be a man that is different from what we considered necessary for masculinity in the past. They're promoting a brand of masculinity that doesn't discriminate, that is willing to show vulnerability, to embrace the traditionally feminine, and to be unapologetically oneself. But it's still a form of masculinity. Just recently, a conservative influencer tweeted a video of the Try Guys with the caption, America's fertility crisis explained. This was clearly intended to be a knock at the masculinity of the Try Guys, and consequently, any other man willing to stray from the norm. And people were mad. Like, really mad. <laughs> clearly, there is something threatening to people in this conservative bubble about men who aren't fitting the definition of masculinity that they apply. So we have to ask, why is challenging masculinity such a threat? I think the answer is that for so many people who have spent so much of their lives struggling to meet the standards of hegemonic masculinity and shove themselves into a little box that society deems appropriate for them, seeing people who have liberated themselves from that box poses a real threat and makes them feel insecure about their own traits that they might not be able to fit so perfectly into that box. But rather than using this as fuel to deconstruct our boxes that society puts us in, they become defensive and stick to where they are comfortable. The Try Guys aren't going to revolutionize masculinity, but I think they represent a wider willingness to deviate from the norm and live your life in a way that is true to yourself, no matter what that might mean. They serve as positive role models for young people, especially boys and men, who might need that extra push out of their little box. I'll leave you with a quote from Eugene Lee Yang. A lot of guys are very daunted by the idea that they will have to adhere to a popularized or more visible version of a more effeminate man, someone who's more open-minded. Even within this group, there's such a diversity in how we express our modern maleness. Don't ever feel like you have to fit into a new box by getting out of the old mailbox. There's no new mailbox. The new mailbox is just a plethora of non-boxes.